Uh, welcome to Live Tying in, what month are we in now? April? Yep. April this year's flying by, isn't it? I think I turned 47 this April. I think I did. Yep. 47 years old. Anyway, it's been, um, it's been a long time between Live Tying videos. So we thought we'd come back, just make a little um, cameo. No, not really. We've got a bit of a plan. Shan says, wow. Hey, Shan. How are you, mate? That um, hour, Shan, that you said you were going to call me back in, that's the longest hour yet. <laughs> Still waiting. Anyway, maybe tomorrow my, my luck might change. <laughs> um, anyway, tonight we're going to go and we're just going to tie a really simple, um, really simple top water foam diver fly. So this is one that, um, that I used throughout the bass season and EP season and when the brim were munching down the cicadas and so forth. So had some really good success on it on those three species. Um, but particularly bigger brim tended to, tended to nail it. The little ones probably missed the hook a fair bit. So, but um, it's a really simple fly to tie. Looks really nice in the water, has a, a really nice profile about it and um, just sort of does the job on those species. But anyway, uh, I tied a practice one um, just a little while ago, just to make sure that I could still um, do one, because I only tied one batch for us this season. So I sort of did them in this color. And I did it with a black head, and then I tried a white head with a um, grizzly rear on it which uh, that did really well as well. So all three colors tended to go quite quite nicely. I tied up some olive, but I never got around to using it. But I think that that would be another, would be another good color, just that natural, um, you know, olive and black kind of buggy sort of color. But anyway, that's it. I didn't even really name the fly. I just sort of called it like a Rainey's Foam Diver, something or other, what I call it. I think that's it. No. Rainy's foam diver, anyway. So the materials uh, that you'll need, I'll just go through those first of all. So there's some um, some hairline hen saddle. That's um, that's in the in the brown grizzly. I do put a little bit of um, rabbit in between of the, the legs. So this is just some hen six mil, but you just really want something that's got, you know, got some good volume about it just to keep those legs um, sort of flared. You could probably put in a ball of dubbing or something like that as well if you wanted to. Um, I just prefer that little bit of natural just for that little bit of extra weight at the back there. Um, some crystal flash. Even though this fly's got plenty of flash in it already, I still do add a bit of crystal flash over that rabbit. Um, then we use some filler flash in between of those hand um, saddles. And we're gonna tie that on a Gamagatsu B10S in the size 10, which is, ah. Size two. B10S in the size two, sorry about that. Could be a bit rusty, <laughs> it's been a couple of months, but anyway. Uh, that one, and then the Rainey's uh, diver heads in the small size, matches up with that sized two B10S hook really, really nicely. There's normally three in the pack, but obviously that one's number three from my, um, from my test run. Um, that's really the materials that you'll need. A spool of 210 denier thread. Um, as much as you won't see uh, pretty much any of the thread work under there, so it just doesn't really matter what color. Um, I don't use that color a lot in my tying, so I just thought I'd pop it on the spool to use some of it up. Uh, and then just your regular tooling. So obviously your vise, uh, nice pair of sharp scissors. Now you will need a set of hackle pliers for this um, pattern. And then some super glue to bond that foam head on to the uh, thread base right at the end, okay? And I do always just have like a smaller pair of fine scissors just in case I need to get in there and cut those saddle um, or those hen saddle 
um, stems <coughs> or trim that fella flush cord. So that's about it. Um, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee if that's all right. Just a quick one. Season, the season's starting to change now, which is nice. You know, it's coming into that winter salmon sort of thing starting to happen. So we'll get into that once we can find some time. We almost pulled it, almost pulled this one out um, tonight. We're pretty busy at the moment, so we almost put out an apology post rather than going ahead with it. But we thought it was um, important to keep going. <laughs> Lots goes on. Anyway, we've just put the hook inside of the vise. And I'm just going to put a, uh, a base of thread along, right along that hook shank, just like so. I'm just going to cut him off, get rid of that. Okay. Now what I normally do right at the start is I just like to see where, uh, whereabouts you know, whereabouts the materials need to run to in terms of uh, the, the shank and the point. So you can see if I've got a nice clear eye here to tie in a, to tie in a loop knot, then I know that I need to go past that hook point. And the other factor that you do need to consider when you're using these Rainey's heads is that if you can see that down there, they're really uh, they've got a fairly big gap right through here and they're quite tapered all the way in. So when I'm tying this fly, as much as the rear of the head sort of ended just, just in front of the point, I really want the materials to be extended to about there, to about sort of about, let's say that's uh, seven, about seven mils from that hook eye. Okay, so then in terms of the head here, uh, where it's coned down internally, we want this part to be bonded onto the thread really, really well. And we want this part of the head to be filled out with feather and filler flush, if that makes sense. Okay, so just a little bit of explanation um, on that first up. So if you've got any questions um, tonight, just pop them on the screen there and Sheree will try and relay them to me just like we used to do. And, uh, and we'll try and answer them as we go along. But, but, you know, really, I suppose this fly is a nice one to have when the cicadas are really popping, you know? So, um, and if you're gonna target those three species um, during that sort of, that peak of the summer and this one this one's a cracker really easy to cast I fished this on a four weight uh, for most of the past season um, I did change late you know late in the season and started fishing some glass uh, which was nice and again it cast really easy on that glass six weight um, and the fly sits really low in the water. So as much as that looks like a, a really, like a bulky foam head, uh, literally with the combination of, the, of these materials, you end up with the top section here just sticking out of the water surface. So, um, and you can just give it a really nice little, little pop or a little bloop. And it doesn't, it's not overwhelming to tell you the truth. And that's what I really like about this. So when you look at this in the packet or on the web shop, you probably think that it creates, you know, a really big um, disturbance and noise. But I think with the balance that we've got here in the materials, the fly tends to sit really nice and low in the water. Um, and it just, just with a little strip, you get that really nice pop. So... Anyway, there you go, there's a tuft of rabbit. Um, over the top of that rabbit, we're just gonna put in a couple of strands of crystal flush. So this is the root beer color. Um, I think I've said this before on these vids that I really like this root beer color uh, for those three species. Um, so there's, 
I don't know, there's, uh, let's say there's four strands there. And I'm just going to put them around the thread. Double it over. Lock it down. Give it a bit of an upwards pull. And then just clip them just a bit longer than the rabbit. Okay, just like so. Give them a bit of a play around. Pull them out a little bit so they're not just all bound in, straight down in line with the hook shank. Just flare them out a little bit. Okay. I think we should be pretty comfortable with that. Yeah? Yep. Okay, from the saddle patch, um, hen saddle patch, I'm going to go fairly low down here to select my legs. Okay, so i um, just going to get a couple out just give them a bit of a clip probably didn't mean to pull that many out but that's a, that's okay is there people laughing no just me there should be okay so i'm just going to pair them pair them up and bind them in on the sides, just like so. And you just really want these legs, these kicker legs to be a bit longer than the rabbit that's in the middle there, that's in the center. So a little pair there. They might be a bit shorter than my demo one from earlier. Oh, they're about the same. About the same length, probably a little bit skinnier. And we'll grab another set. Pull out the, the fluff from down the bottom. You don't have to be too pedantic uh, with that. What I do like to do though is just make sure that the tips of these are they're in line. I'm just going to twist him around a little bit. So what I've got there is, if you have a look down that fly, I've just tied in, you know, the legs are, they're in, in line with each other. They're not, they're not offset. Okay, bind those little bits and pieces down. I don't mind using a fair bit of thread um, through this section here because it helps fill a little bit of the void in behind of that, uh, that foam head. So don't feel that you need to skimp on your thread. Uh, probably until you get towards the front of the fly, but you'll see that I'll still just really work from about half the half the shank backwards at this point of time. I've only put a base of thread at the front there. Now to put in the first feather, I'm just going to move up up the hen saddle a little, little bit so you can start to see where I've started picking some out. And then, so we're going to do this step a couple of times just to start to put in some barring and, and filling out the rear of the body. We'll go up just a bit higher. So I'm gonna clip that one out. How come you move up? I move up to get the next size of feather. Okay, so if you have a look, uh, if you have a look down here where I've selected the legs from, the feathers are quite, are quite stout, so to speak. And then when I move up here a little bit further, they get a little bit longer. And then up here, they get a little bit longer and a little bit wider. And then same as you move up to the top, you get them so that they're, they're sort of pretty long and then pretty webby. Okay, so we move up. Um, move up that to just pick out the appropriate feather. And the other reason why I want it to, why I'm moving up is that I want the rear of the fly to build upwards in a taper so that it matches up with the uh, profile of the back of the head, so to speak. So if I used really small feathers um, in this section of the fly, you wouldn't achieve that kind of full body profile. And that's what I'm trying to achieve is that full body profile for, for that particular top water pattern, okay? So hopefully that 
Hopefully that makes sense. I just think it might look a bit skinny. Um, and when you're trying to represent a cicada, so to speak, as much as it's got kicker legs and cicadas don't have that, um, it's still got that profile that I'm trying to achieve in the water. Okay. All right. So with the first, um, with the first feather, I'm going to tie it in from the tip. So not from the base, but from the tip. Okay. Now with my hackle pliers, I'm just going to go around a couple of times. So one, two. And brush, just brush those little, those little um, fibers out. Okay, just like so. This is probably where your fine scissors come into play a little bit. Just wrap that down. Okay. Pretty happy with that. Any questions there at all? We're all good. Everyone's good. Okay, so the next part is I'm just going to put in a little bit of filler flush. So this color is uh, tan, but you know you could put in um, you could put in orange if you're doing so, sort of like a black and orange uh, kind of colorway. I'm just going to tie in the base of that, and we're going to just take a couple couple wraps and while you do this just pull the fibers just pull the fibers um, backwards so two wraps is about all that I want Vinny says paying attention hey Vinny how are you mate you must almost be back home soon Vinny are you or you're um, still away living the dream Okay, so then we're just going to tidy that up a bit, push all those fibers backwards. Okay, we go back to the, go back to the hen saddle and we're going to move up, we're going to move up a length in the feather. Um, black and purple kit possibly available. Uh, black and purple. Um, I don't believe that this is available in purple. I haven't come across it yet uh, from hairline. So they do it in this color and they do it in olive um, and they do it in just some some uh, plain colors like a cream and I think like a gray, like a dun. Um, I haven't seen it in the black purple available, but you know, I'll keep my eye out. Okay, so same thing again. We have tied that in via the tip. And we're just going to give it a couple of turns. That uh, camera is going to be in the way. Yeah, just a smidgen too close. Okay, a couple of turns there. And tie that down like so. Push all them back. Jeez, it's a quiet crowd tonight, or you're not relaying any questions. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's <laughs> going on. Just fixated on my fixated myself. Oh yeah. Maybe it was too maybe I was away from doing this for too long, I don't know. Hopefully it's coming across all right because I felt a bit nervy doing doing this one tonight. It's been, like I say, it's been a little while now. So, but now that it's a little bit cooler too, things have, you know, things are starting to slow a little bit and I suppose you just end up with a little bit more time. Um, so that sort of peak, peak summer bite, you know, is, is well and truly over. So, Tom says watching the master at work. I don't know about master. <laughs> I think there's plenty of pl plenty of great tires here, but um, yeah, I'm not sure about master, Tom. But thank you anyway. <laughs> probably just probably more like a guy that doesn't mind just being on the other side of the camera. Okay, so we've just tied in 
a little bit more of the flush and then we're going to go up again uh, to the top of the patch and find a uh, find a nice uh, wide webby feather just clear that clear that tip out I did it to just cut that off just a little bit tie him in like so and I will just start to start to uh, build that platform up a little bit because we're going to need to start thinking about bonding the foam head uh, into position. Okay, hack applies. Yep. All right, so you can see how far down the hook shank I've started to progress. And then this, with this last feather, we're actually only going to use a fair bit of it. So just keep pulling those fibers backwards. Backwards. And then backwards, and I'm almost at the base of, of that fluff that you don't really need to tie in as such. So we'll just tie that off. Just fix up your legs if you've just been manhandling, manhandling there, them there. They might push you out of position or something like that. Anyway, so you can sort of see the profile of the fly. Once I just, I'll move my hands out of the way before I do this next step and you can have a little bit of a look. Um, it's getting pretty close to about the right sort of base. Um, if you wanted to, if you had a few trapped fibers or, and that sort of thing, uh, you could just, you could just run your dubbing brush or comb through that just to pop them out. Make sure that you're happy with it. Okay. That's all. It's all nice and neat. And then if you have a look at the fly as it is, you can sort of see what's going on. From that from that angle there you've got your legs which are in, in line you have a little bit of crystal flash out the back a little bit of natural material in there which does a couple of things it adds a little bit of weight to the rear once it's wet it helps keep those uh, kicker legs flared adds a little bit of a light belly um, and then you start to move through to that contrast um, and flash sort of midsection of the fly and once that's wet, you could imagine that that's given off a nice amount of light without being overbearing. Um, um, Tom asks, could sure. you use thin resin to lock the legs on and into place? Um, yeah, you could if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wouldn't that wouldn't be a drama. You could put a a little drop of super glue in there as well if you wanted to. Um, but you certainly could. Um, put a, a, a drop of resin, something like an ultra thin, something that penetrates the thread would probably, would probably better be better than some, like a resin that sits up on top of the thread. So something that penetrates for sure. Okay. And then before you whip finish that off, you can always just jam that head on to make sure that you've got enough um, pressure. Um, of that thread base that you can feel it, that it's that it's actually start that'll actually pushes on um, that the thread pushes onto that base. It's not too you know it's not too loose. If I start to pull that back, I've actually got to you know pull it back off of the off of the thread base, so to speak. So you don't want your thread base too skinny. I suppose is what I'm trying to say. There you go. There's a whip finish for you, Vinny. Hopefully you just watched that and learnt that again. Done. Two of them. You have to watch out in slow mo, mate. To so clip that off, when you put your um, super glue on in this area, so I'm using the Golf um, gel super glue. You don't get too long to set it. Okay, so push the head on and give yourself a, a bit of a practice so you know what's got to happen. And then with this. I'm going to just going to give that a really nice, um, really nice 
really nice coating. Not so much that it's, you know, dripping off, but I don't mind if it soaks into that thread a little bit and then starts just to soak in a little bit to the to the bases of those feather feathers. Put your lid back on. Just make sure that that's right to go. I'm gonna push that on. So it's like that. Make sure that it's square. And then what I actually do is push it up like so. Do the heads have a hole in them already? They do, yeah, they're preformed. Okay. What um, hook would you recommend for medium size heads? Um, I'd still go the B10S because I like the shape and the clearance that you achieve um, from the base of the head to the point. So I'd look at, uh, for a medium head, I'd go to a 1 or possibly a 1.0 depending on the species that you're trying to target. So definitely, as you can sort of see, the head takes up, you know, more than half of the hook shank. Um, but you still end up with a really nice amount of clearance from, from here to the hook point. Okay, so it's not, it's not one of those heads that, you know, just crowd that area and make setting the hook uh, more difficult than what it should be. So, like I said with this, I just give that a bit of a, I actually give that a bit of a push up. Um, so I'm, you know, binding the foam to the thread and then uh, once it's in the water and it's sitting like so, you get a really nice exposed hook point here, okay? It's only just a slight angle of that head, but I found that it does make a bit of a difference. So, really simple fly to tie, as you see. As you can see, it's just a couple of steps and then a few of the steps are just repeated. So, it's just about having the right materials, I suppose. Um, so you can sort of put that together. But this is something that I I worked on a couple of years ago and then went away from it. You know, I didn't I didn't have the right mix of materials um, to create the fly. I had, you know, rabbit tails and that kind of thing, you know, in there instead of this combination. Um, and for those species, it actually just created a fly that was a little bit too big, in, our, in my opinion. Um, so that one, that one seemed to get the job done. So that's it. It's a Rainey's foam diver, really. Pretty simple fly. Um, we have got a self-tying kit available. We put one up tonight um, for this. So it's on our website now in, in the self-tying kits page. So what we have done is you would get enough material to tie three. So, and there's a couple of color choices. So you can, you can do this color choice. So it's the um, brown grizzly with the cinnamon head. Uh, the other option is the brown grizzly with the black head, which is the image that we used for the product on the website and also for the advertisement for the live tying tonight. And then there's also um, the green grizzly with an olive head, okay? There's only a certain amount of those kits available because it's all determined about how much stock of the heads that we actually have. Okay, so. Um, what species would you target with this? Bass. 100% bass and estuary perch. And then when the cicadas are at that peak noise and there's a lot of, of those, um, a lot of those uh, big black cicadas that are, um, dying in the water on the water surface so to speak then the broom come out to eat those as well so all three and no problems with big brim um, munching that down either they actually attack it quite aggressively so but when i suppose when it's the you know when it's that peak noise or if you're working through a a creek system or a river system or something like that um, we try we try to find the banks that have the most noise on them so we work from the, the peak noise to about 50 meters each side. Tends to be 
the most productive area. You mean um, like cicada noise? When the cicada noise is happening, yep. But that can change. You know, that bank can switch off or that 100 metres can switch off and the next one, you know, the next 100 metres or 200 metres down the bank can just light up, you know, and then all of a sudden that stretch of water is becoming the more productive stretch so or the other side of the river or, you know, whatever. So we tend to just keep moving to where that to where the noise is. Um, so. Would you put a weed guard on in heavy cover? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah, no, no question I would. So um, how I would go about that to make it really, really easy, um, I would grab my bodkin and I would... Um, I would pilot a hole right at the front of the flat, right at the fl front of the flat area, just here. Okay, and it do doesn't need to be very deep. Pilot a hole, and then say with a, you probably want somewhere between twenty and fifty pound vertical guard. Pilot a hole. Push your fluorocarbon guard into that hole so that you know that it's right. Put a drop of super glue on the end of the fluorocarbon and jam it straight in. All right, and that and I'll, that would make a a vertical guard out of this area here. Or the other way that you could do is actually angle it in like so, with the same method. So angle a pilot hole on that forty-five degree bend, and then trim it so it was just in front of. Uh, just in front of your hook point would be the other way that you could put a guard in. If you put it in vertical, you can actually bend it back a little bit at that hinge. And so you'll get that. So it wouldn't have to be a vertical guard. You could bend it so that it was a, you know, 45 degree angle and you'll get that hop over structure. Yeah, 100%. Def definitely it can be done. Um, will the kits have a guide? Just a couple of steps. Uh, no. Will you be putting this video anywhere for people to... Yeah, we'll try and save this video um, to either... Instagram. Either Instagram TV or it'll go to our YouTube channel. So either one. So once we finish filming this and we can work out um, what we're doing with the save, then on the product on the website we'll put where you can see the video if i'm fortunate enough that we can get this straight onto youtube then we will put a link to the tonight's tying video with the product it'll be there okay so either or you'll be advised as to where you can find it sounds good yeah i think that's about it mm -hmm. yeah so pretty easy step by step a uh, little top water foam diver Super simple, pretty quick, um, but more importantly, really, really effective. If, if you're fishing for those species, you know, those bass brim EP, then you can easily cast this on a four weight. Uh, most guys are probably fishing the five or a six weight for those. So happy days fishing, fishing this fly on, on that kind of weight outfit. Obviously rigged with a floating line. Um, I do tend to run a pretty short leader on my top water um, presentation. So I'm sort of at, you know, four feet or a meter 20, maybe to about a meter 60, um, would be about the absolute maximum uh, length. And then just at the breaking strain that you're comfortable with. So, you know, I tend to run a mono, mono liter of about 15 pound for those species when it's happening. So, and in heavy cover, but you know, that's, I'll leave, all of that up to to your own devices you know you've got to fish what you're comfortable with so if you're not comfortable with that but you're comfortable with six pound and 16 foot leader then that's what you're comfortable with anyway four foot <laughs> four foot straight <laughs> through <laughs> yeah exactly anyway uh next time we get a little bit of time we'll put an put another announcement out for a um for another video so Thanks very much for tuning in tonight. Really appreciate it. Hopefully you've learned a couple of tips from that. 
Um, it's nice to see everyone again. I really look forward to watching this back myself. And until next time, enjoy your time. See you later. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Bye.